I'm going to shoot a little video today about another cheap soap. I believe this one's available at the Dollar Tree or Walmart Pears. This one is uh, just says Pears Transparent Soap Gentle Care. It's a 3.5 ounce bar of soap. It smells not great. It's almost medicinal. But it's glycerin. This is a glycerin soap. Uh, I tried Colonel Conx the other day and uh, the Amber. I was impressed. I was able to get a really good uh, lather out of it. And uh, I have had my Whipped Dog Silver Tip Badger Brush. I'm going to shake off some of the water. I'm going to load this guy up with what's on this. Uh, this puck here, I have had, uh, I have had it uh, blooming for a minute or two. Just put a little water on top of it. Um, had it blooming for a minute or two, and maybe I have too much water in my in my brush, but we'll just see. So we're gonna load it. And uh, I'm sure this particular soap, this glycerin soap, doesn't have the pure ingredients and the absence of add-ons, um, byproducts, and things like that. I'm sure it's got stuff that you might not want if you're uh, if you can spend the money on a more pure glycerin soap. But uh, there are tons of reviews out there on the high-end soaps. And I just thought, you know what, what if somebody was needing and just kind of wanted to start off on safety razor shaving, double-edged shaving, and they just didn't have a big budget. So I uh, made a video of a bar of Yardley's um, that I uh, got at the Dollar Tree or Walmart, can't remember. And uh, that's looking good so far. I would say that that is pretty well lathered up. We could probably start face lathering that uh, right now if you, if you wanted to. Let me rinse off my hands. And I have a almost dry bowl. And we'll just um, I don't, like I said, I may have had too much water in my brush, so I'm not going to add any for right now. I'll just whip it up here for a minute and see if I need to add any more. That way I don't add too much. The smell isn't that great, so generally this is just going to be a, uh, might be a, you know what? There are so many people out here out there that like weird fragrances that I can't stand. Um, I am the, like that old English shaving tradition is apparently one where there's lots of florals and soapy kind of smells, and that is not me. But they sell those different uh, English manufacturers just sell so many. Well, look at that. It's it's solid. Not solid, but it looks very uh, opaque. So I think I can stand to add. And by the way, I uh, am using distilled water. I have hard water. And so I have learned that um, some of my favorite soaps really need distilled water to make an amazing lather. Um, and so I have switched to distilled water and what a big difference if you have hard water or you don't know if you have hard water. One thing is uh, if you if your shower head and your sink fixtures if they start to spray in weird ways because there's this white crusty stuff on the on the shower head or if your kitchen sink sprayer has crusty stuff on it, you know, where the water comes out, you probably have hard water. That's what that is. Those are calcium lime deposits. 
Um, I was just reading online today about how one guy up in Michigan has uh, hard water. And so he figured out that he, yeah, see, it's looking pretty good. Um, he figured out that uh, he can soften his water by adding a little bit of citric acid. One gram of citric acid in one liter is uh, apparently what he, what makes his water just right. And so he didn't need to use the distilled water. Um, but he also did some experiments and uh, so with the one gram, he was getting very good lather. Uh, but if he added two grams of citric acid to his one liter of water, then the lather would not even come up at all. So that was good information. I was almost ready to go buy some citric acid because I just do it. When I use my distilled water, I just use like a half a cup at a time because um, I soak my brush in it. I don't really pour it like in the sink and uh, and rinse everything out with it. I just soak my brush in it and then everything else is kind of tap water except for the um, except for the water I'm adding right now as I as I make my lather. So we've got some peaks. Does it have a sheen? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a sheen. Um, I've seen on, on online how they were talking about Colonel Conks, um, and how it, uh, didn't do very well. Some people just even went out, went, went on to say that it, by and large, it just wasn't a very good soap. And I didn't know anything about it. I had never used the glycerin soaps before, so I didn't have any idea. But when I tried amber the other day, holy cow, it was great. I used the same method here, distilled water, uh, badger brush. They even talk about uh, online, it's a very common thing to say that um, one should use a bore brush uh, when you're using a soap. And then you can use a badger brush when you, when you do a cream because the bore is so much uh, stiffer. And so it can faster at whipping up a, a lather. And, uh, and that might be true to some extent, but I just didn't have a problem whipping up a, a good lather with a glycerin soap and a, and a uh, silver tip badger brush. Maybe it took a little bit longer, but it didn't seem too much longer to me. So, uh, but I did, I did go ahead and get a board brush because they're so inexpensive. I thought, hey, let's, let's give it a shot sometime. Nice to have, have it on hand if I ever need it. Holy cow, so this is making a good bit of lather. Very cool. Um, I don't know if uh, I might try Colonel Conks with my hard water and see if it, if it uh, is different. Um, but I am just making a ton of good custardy lather here. So that's pretty good. Well, had a little rig set up to try to give the camera some shade, um, but it fell apart because I think we got a little lens flare there, the bottom corner of the screen. So, all right, so I am very happy with this huge amount of lather that I've got. Very happy with that. Still kind of smells medicinal, um, you know, so who knows, that may be your thing. Uh, yeah, that's right, there's some, there's some people out there who like the Bay Rum stuff, which is kind of like got a lot of clove in it, which I can't stand. Um, uh, there's also people out there who like, uh, I think there's some licorice or anise flavored, uh, flavored fragranced soaps out there. So who knows, you know, this may become somebody's favorite soap, especially considering the price. Uh, today, Parker 98R, heavy duty, nice heavy razor. We have a Bluebird blade in it, and it has been used three times already, maybe four. And so we'll check that out too. 
All right, uh, give my face a little bit of water. Now, I almost always shave after my shower. I think uh, most people shave before their shower, at least with the videos that I've seen. I'm not an in-shower shaver either because I I've heard about bacterial stuff um, and uh, I just think it wastes water. I don't think there's any need for that. Um, also, I'm a cold cold shaver. Um, I like not waiting. I like not waiting for water to get warm and hot and stuff. Look at that thick lather. Um, and also, I uh, like the energy saving that I'm not heating water all the time. Um, like not try, not worrying about if my lather is getting losing its temperature. Lather feels great anyway. And I also like uh, I think what was it, the Art of Manliness? Maybe a blog that was on I read a few years ago, and it it was like, well, he was thinking about cold shaving, and he was like, you know, there's all these soldiers and wars in France and stuff decades ago and they didn't have hot water. How did they manage to shave if we're all thinking that we have to have hot water to do it? And so, he, it's, uh, so as I shave with cold water I often remember those soldiers in the trenches who did not have such a luxury and this helps me identify with them in a small way. Getting some feedback. Some audio feedback here. I don't know, I guess this 98R is, is a little more aggressive than uh, I have a the Jagger DE89, I think it is. And I think it's fairly mild. And uh, I used my Parker variant the other night to, to try out some Trumper cream with this blade. And it did really well, too. I didn't have it set at an aggressive setting because... Actually, I do it. I use it as a three up here on my cheeks because they're more robust. But I got some, you know, that loose neck hair, neck skin down there. I'll change it down to a two for that. All right, let's give a rinse and see how this feels. Pretty good, pretty good. Nothing, uh, uh, did I feel protected and cushiony? Um, like I, the Colonel Conks gave me a lot more lubrication. Hey, now that's interesting. I'm glad I tried out the Colonel Conks first because uh, it's a glycerin soap and uh, it's given me a little bit of perspective and kind of a comparison because the Colonel Cox left more, maybe it's got more oil or something like that in it because I really felt protected and it was very slick. And so when it came to rinsing it off at the end of a pass, I could still, I could still feel the, um, uh, the slipperiness on my skin, whatever oil or whatever was there, I could still feel it. So I knew that it was helping that razor to glide across safely. Um, I did not feel that slipperiness just now as I rinsed off. I'm sure that's something that may not be a, a trademark of glycerin in particular, but of some things that you add into the glycerin soap or you know, who knows. But as you saw earlier, I've got tons of lather still. Here you go. Still in my bowl. Lots of it. 
and uh, you saw how long I loaded it. Um, so you get a lot. This bowl here is a dog bowl, by the way. I find that it has a lot of nice traits to be a shaving bowl. Uh, cross grain pass here. The uh, has a lip in the bottom to allow for good, good grab, good holding while you're doing your thing. Um, I have mapped out my my face, and uh, my these hairs here are pretty much straight down. I went over here; it comes down and goes this way, and everything kind of ends up over here. Uh, down here it turns inward just a little bit and then does a quick S turn to end up here Right here. It kind of goes straight down for just a little bit and then turns so apparently this is my black hole over here that sucks sucks all the hair Sucks all the hair in This definitely feels more aggressive than my Jagger That's part of the reason why it's in my rotation when I change when I'm testing out blades. Let's see. Is that it for the second pass? I reckon so. But I tell you what, these little hairs right here are such a problem to get. So difficult. I end up giving myself a razor burn if I try to work hard to get them. I mean, I've tried pulling in different ways and going different uh, directions with the, with the blades. Here, let's take a look at them right quick. After two, yeah, they're kind of still in their normal existence. Everything else is cut, but they are going to require what I'll do there. I did a diagonal pass this way, a cross grain, and then I'll do, a, I'll do one now this way, and hopefully that'll get some of them. I, uh... So... This lather, I am feeling something on my face. Um, just very, very light uh, tingle. So maybe it's got something in there that is cleaning me up or something. Look at that. Maybe it was in the 80s, Saturday Night Live, that had a skit that they were making fun of the commercials where you know, it was some dandruff shampoo or something that tingled, and so that you knew it was working, and so they were making fun of that, and so they had a, uh, you know, their hair was melting away or boiling or something like that, and then the caption was, it it burns, so I know it's working, you know, something, they were just making fun of that one, that was funny. So, uh, but I have slightly sensitive skin, it's not totally sensitive, I don't have to be too careful, but occasionally I will run into an aftershave balm that uh, is uh, causes a little irritation. All right, third pass. Very happy with the weight of this uh, Parker. I also like the method where you generally try to stay as parallel to the skin as you can in terms of blade angle, razor angle. You stay, and then you gradually lift up the handle until you feel it cut. Um, once I switched to that, I had a lot fewer cuts. And I was able to use the uh, sharpest blades feather and whatnot. Okay, now here's the danger zone. Uh, 
bad. One direction. Okay, yeah, here is still cross grain. And the funny thing is, I, here's cross grain, but then when I get up here, it starts to be against the grain. It's kind of funny. It's important to map out your face and know which, which way your hairs grow. That'll help you get the get the right angle. Sometimes really it's just a matter of shifting the angles and then you'll get a much better cut if you haven't mapped your face out. Uh, so that's third pass. Let's rinse it off and get a feel for it. Those stinking little neck hairs are still giving me an issue. Let's take a look. You know what? I'm just not going to bother with that. I can feel them with my hand, and if I look closely, I can see them. But I am just not going to worry about those. Someday if I find the razor and blade combo that gets rid of those guys without a focused touch-up, that's my holy grail, and I will... Maybe sit on that sit on that combination for a long time. So uh, that's three passes. And I've still got tons of good lather. Um, it hasn't dried out, anything like that. Um, in terms of protection, how did it feel? I couldn't really tell a difference. Nothing nothing came across uh, as I was as I was shaving. Um, I didn't feel unprotected anywhere. I uh, felt like I had decent lubrication, or at least as good as, you know, the Taylor of Old Bond Street and uh, Perrazzo, Sella, um, those guys. So I've kind of lost the smell now because I've been in it so much that it probably just I can't smell it anymore. But uh, so the answer to the question will pairs. Glycerin soap, an inexpensive soap available at uh, inexpensive retailers. Uh, will it give you a good shave? The answer is yes. Right now, the answer is yes. Oh, you know what? One thing, let me do that Allen block thing and see if it tells me. I actually haven't done that yet. I've seen so many guys do it online. I normally just kind of use it as a styptic pencil to uh, to cause the uh, bleeding to stop on little small nicks. So this will this is the lie detector. I am feeling some stinging, but uh, no big deal. And uh, obviously I have no bleeders or anything like that. I assume a weeper is also a, some kind of bleeder. I haven't learned. Oh yeah, the stinging is not very bad at all. So uh, my skin was very well protected against a, I believe the 98R is kind of a moderate exposure blade. I don't think it's aggressive. I can't remember. Maybe somebody can correct me. Uh, I, but I don't, the feel of it is it is not a, a mild uh, exposure blade and so um, uh, a an old bluebird uh, fourth use bluebird blade in a medium exposure razor using a glycerin soap uh, inexpensive pairs glycerin soap success um, now I almost don't feel any uh, stinging at all so um, it's gonna rinse that off I normally um, don't do the alum on the face thing. I normally just do a uh, the balm afterwards. Um, I bought some witch hazel to maybe bring that in. Um, don't know if I'm going to or not. First time I used it, it my face felt a little um, I felt a little irritated afterwards. I don't know if it was the witch hazel or the um, that particular maybe I used higher concentration of the shaving cream for that particular day 
I don't know. So we'll just uh, this is the Nivea. I like the I like the I like the smell of it, but mainly it's just really nice to my skin. Been very happy with it. It calms down that rates and burn pretty well. Interesting. So I don't feel any irritation. I think some people might have said that the glycerin soaps tend to leave your face a little dry. Um, but uh, if you're gonna, I think a lot of wet shavers use a balm or something afterwards anyway, and so maybe that's just not a big deal at all if it's if it's true, which makes sense because it it absorbs water. Um, so I could see that. Um, so my my face feels great. Um, you know, I don't feel any irritation at all, even going against rubbing against the grain on those little stubborn neck hairs is uh not irritating at all so maybe i'm not who knows i might start using that alum maybe i'll do it for a week and then quit for a week and see what i feel but uh nice uh, so there you go cheap soap can be done and it can be done well uh, even with a badger brush i was able to mix up a to load up some from this bar of glycerin soap and it worked well and it was inexpensive. Um, it, I imagine that a, a bore brush being a little bit more stiff would, uh, you know, maybe whip the lather up a little quicker. But I think since I let it bloom, that really helped it not to really make it too much of a difference. Um, excellent. So it can be done. Uh, maybe that's a, a soap to uh, stick in the back of your drawer so that someday if you're running out of... Uh, something that you, uh, your preferred cream or preferred saving soap, then that'll be there as a standby. Just, uh, um, uh, I think it did lather up actually a little quicker than a lot of the creams that I've been using. Um, I like to get one of those bowls that has ridges on the bottom of it to really help to speed up the cream, uh, the suds generation. But anyway, there you go. little experiment for you. Hope it's of use to somebody out there. Take care tips I wanted to share uh, for especially you entry-level guys or budget-minded guys blades they come in packs of a hundred and so you can uh, uh, buy them that way off Amazon and they are very inexpensive some of them get down to six cents a piece which is nice um, the, uh, the nicer ones are get more like 12 cents a piece maybe but that's still pretty good you can usually make one go a week. Um, that's pretty budget friendly. Um, so be aware of the 100 packs. Uh, the Wilkinson Swords were a great value and they're pretty sharp. Um, uh, I was gonna, just going to buy about 20 of them. Uh, but then for a couple extra bucks, I got 100. So it was a great price. I just went ahead and went and bought them. Um, uh, they also sell the super sharp ones like Feather and uh, Astra and treat is this another super sharp one at least in my opinion um, I don't know if they sell that one on Amazon for a, in a hundred quantity or not uh, so the blades there's a way uh, a little helpful hint about that the glycerin soap it is uh, it attracts water it absorbs it and water almost dissolves it and so don't leave it in a place in like in your shower that's going to frequently get watered um, try to let it dry out uh, between uses and you'll get it it'll go a long way if you uh, if you leave it in a popular water place it will dissolve much more quickly so let you know about that in a similar vein I am using gentleman John Allen block I got it off Amazon um, the uh, little plastic case seemed to look a little better on the other brand uh, I can't remember if it was razor rock or there was something but uh, this one seems okay but it was a little cheaper, so that's why I decided to get it. Um, it's basically a salt block. This is a salt, not the kind we put on our food, but chemically speaking, I believe it is a salt. And so um, you have to dry it off after you use it. So make sure you do that. Uh, towel it off. And then I'm going to just let, the, let it sit here with the lid open for a while and uh, make sure that all the moisture leaves because otherwise you, just like a normal salt uh, kind of lake does, you will uh, come back to a very small piece left over um, after a while. 
I've seen some Amazon complaints about that, and I think it was just because they didn't know uh, the nature of the, the salt block. Uh, for you budget people, Nivea is available. Um, it's very popular, very good for shavers. Um, sensitive skin, um, post shave balm, and it costs about five bucks at Amazon, I think. I'm sorry, I think both Amazon and Walmart um, have a good price on it. I think I've used this about 30 or 40 times, and according to what I see, it's maybe a third of the way down. So that gives you an idea about how long your money will go if you spend it on. This is probably the for the value for the money. It's probably the best one out there from, from my research. I believe that was all the little tips and stuff I had. Uh, your brush uh, doesn't matter whether you hang it upside down or leave it up. Um, the instruction manual for this one said that when you soak it, don't only let the hairs soak underwater. You don't want to get that knot. The knot and the glue is in here that holds it to the handle. And uh, you and it said especially don't immerse it in hot water because that will soften the relationship and the strength of the glue. Another little tip for you. I prefer hanging mine, but I don't have a hanger right now. But uh, it's good to know that it doesn't matter too much about that, whether it's up or down. Just as long as try to get it dry um, after a shave, I will kind of sling it in my sink like that. But then I'll also do a little painting on, it, on my towel to get some more of the moisture out. I think that's all the uh, little extras I have. Thank you.